Welcome back to another Java video, and today we're going to be making a simple GUI using Java Swing. So we're first going to make a new class, a new project, and it's going to be a Java project. And we're going to be making like a USD converter. So we'll just call it USD converter. Okay. So here's our new class. Our new project. I'm used to saying class. So we're going to delete this module.info.java file because that always gives me like issues. And we're going to be using Java Swing and Window Builder, and I'm on Eclipse. So when you first like go on Eclipse, you're not going to have this like little tool, but I can show you how to install it. But for now, we're just doing like a quick little like um, like a little run through. So we're going to go to Swing and select JFrame. We're going to select the source folder we just created. We just call the USD converter and the source folder, and we're going to name our class. We'll just call it um, Currency Converter. Probably spelled that wrong, but that's fine. I'm not an English major. I'm, I make programs. <laughs> okay. So for me, I like to like organize everything into classes. We're gonna call this driver. You want it to have public side void main string args. And from this class, okay. So if we run this, we're gonna have a little window. So just think about it. This main method. So everything's like. How do I explain? Everything's like is made inside this constructor right here. So exit on close if we run our program and we hit X, it's gonna close the program. Set bound sets X and Y on the X and Y axis, and then this sets how big it is, X, and then how long it is Y. My opponent got that wrong. This is X and this is Y. This is this is how long it is and this is how big it is. And uh, so our class currency converter is gonna be extending from JFrame. And then JFrame is just pretty much like the little window. And then content pane is going to be a J panel. And we're going to be uh, setting our content pane to our J panel we created. You really don't have to worry about the border. Like for me, like I said, I like to have everything separated. So I'm going to delete all this code and just call it from our driver class. And we're going to make an object of the currency converter. So you could say currency converter equal. Um, Currency converter program equals new currency converter. So when we call this, the constructor is going to be called. And this constructor has all the code that makes our little program. What's wrong with their main method? Um, we'll call it driver one. I think it's. There we go. So now we run our program and we're not getting no issues, but it's still we're not seeing our little like our little window. So we can say this. We're saying this because we're extending from JFrame. So no, we're talking about a JFrame. This dot set visible. You go to true. Get rid of this. So now if we run our program, we actually have it. And the only thing I don't like, I don't like how it's like how I say it. It's when I open the program, it's on the left side. So we could do content pane. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Cause I'll, I probably will misspell it. Content pane dot set layout, and we'll just say no. So that's we're just setting our layout, and you'll see why right now. We're not, well, now we want to make our how would I say it? So our window opens in the middle. So we could do this dot set uh, location relative, and then there we'll also pass a no. And now if we run our windows in the middle. So I'm using something called Window Builder. Like I said, once again, you won't have this if you just open up Eclipse. Window Builder should like just drag and drop components on on here. And then it will actually add them to our code. So they're kind of linked up together. Uh, we'll make a window. So 611 by 602 is cool. And if you go back, you see how it changes it for us. And if we run it, that's our window right now. Okay. So we're making like a little like currency converter because my parents are always asking me like what's a one dollar in pesos so we're just gonna make a little converter. In order for us to do that, we're gonna need hmm, what do we need? We could use a text field. And um, so this line of code over here, where was it? So I did content pane that say layout into null. If we get rid of this, and we go back to our design, 
you won't be able to like change anything. You could do it from like the actual code or you could do it from here. So we're gonna do content pane or we can do our layout to absolute. And now we can just like move everything around. So I'm gonna, I want like a little place where the, like the user can enter something. And there it is, but it's still not showing up. So let's see what the issue is there. I don't think it's adding it. So where's our, we made a text field. It's adding a text field. Let's do this dot set visible at the end. And there we go, now there's a text field. Well, let's go back to design. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay, that's cool. And then we want to wait for the user to like select what they want to convert the number to. So for that, we could use um use a combo box, J combo box. And we'll make it decent. That's really long. We'll change it right now. We want it to kind of like match up with the height. That's pretty good. That's almost centered. Make this a little longer. Yeah, it's, that's cool. It's, it's not going to look perfect. And then we can add a J label. So a J label just displays text. And um, just, we'll just call it, we can have the variable here. We could change it here and it'll change it in code, but that's honestly fine. And then we could have it say, enter a number to convert. Now if we run that, it's going to say that, but it's cut off. So let's make it a little longer. And like the default like text, I really hate it. I like using, let's go Sego UI, I think it is. We'll make it bold. We'll make it 20. We'll make it so it fits the whole thing. Now if we run it, we're going to ask the user to enter a number to convert. We'll say 12. And then this drop-down menu would have like, options for us to like change so we can make it like go from like pesos to dollars dollars to pesos dollars to yen okay and then we just need one more label we'll put a label right here and then i'm also i'm gonna make it the same uh font go seg ui make it bold we'll go 20 again but i also want to change but well, we don't want it to have text yet because we're gonna change our text ourselves Okay, blank text. And I actually want to change this to. I haven't played with the fonts. This is the one I just, I just use. And we'll make it 15. That's cool for now. Okay, so now we have all our components. Now we actually got to like play with them and make them do stuff. So we have our text field and then text field. And then we have our J combo box. So I'm actually going to make it global so everything can see it. So we do private J combo box combo box and just the name. Oh, where was it at right here? Equals new combo box, and then we're actually do the same thing for our label. Okay, equals, where was it? I really lost it. Right here. So we could say, new label, wait. Oh, no, it's, it was over here. <laughs> there you go. So we have our... Wait, we want to have this up here because this label is blank. This could be. Okay. There we go. Because we want our new label to be like accessible from anywhere. Okay. So now we have pretty much all our components. We have a con we have our content manager, just our J panel, our text field so the user can enter something, our combo box so they could actually like have a drop down menu, and then we're gonna alter our new label one. <clears throat> Was what like the um, say they said dollars of pesos with like the output we're gonna output the label one, so we have a currency converter class that extends J frame, but you want it to also to implement something. We're gonna be implementing an interface imp. Why well, I, I can't spell that? I spell that implements m. No, I didn't. <laughs> implements and then action listener. 
and it's gonna want us to import that so we can import it and now we're getting an error here which is good because um action listener is an interface and an interface that comes with methods we have to like implement so we can do add implement add unimplemented methods which will give us this method right here and with this method we can like listen to what like the user does and do something based on it okay so we're pretty much all good to go we just have to do what are name our combo box we just need the combo box of course combo box dot and then we can say add action listener and then we could pass in this okay so now we can actually start coding everything so we can go to our action performed event e and then let's see we could say you know if statement so it's going to do something we could say if e which would be this e right here e dot get source equals combo box if that's the case and then we could have a, let's have a string. String selected. We could have it equal to combo box dot get selected item. It would not get selected object. Like that. So whatever the user selects is going to be stored into our string called selected. And then we can use an if statement to play with it. But we're getting an error because we're trying to convert an object to a string. Then we get, if we could just do dot to string to make it a string, okay. So now we have that. And then we can use another if statement. We could say if, oops, no three, if selected dot equals ignore case and then um, we could have it compared to something to like a string but we don't have any strings well I want to say like so we wanted to um, have a drop down box and then like have options in there so where's our combo combo box right here so we can make in a string of we can make a string array and we'll just call it choices okay there's our array right here I'll put it up here. Put it right here. And then we'll have one called, we'll just want to have one, leave one blank. And then one will be dollars to pesos. And then we could have pesos to dollars. And so now we could pass in our string choice, our array of choices of strings into our combo box. And now if we run our code, we have dollars, we have our options actually there. Let's go to design so we can make it bigger. Or we can actually make the, let's make it a 12 font. Still a little small. That's pretty good right there. Okay. So now we actually have like, like, option to select from in our combo box if selected that equals ignore case equals where to have my my array if that's the case if it equals that we just put like a print statement we could do this out oh, i guess i don't want to print so we could say system dot out dot print new line and then we can just print select. Let's see what happens if we do that. Now I'll say dollars of pesos. That's all I'll say because we really haven't coded for the other case. And then we can do else if. Literally just copy this word for word. Oh, of course, I'm not going to print it because it's still dollars of pesos. We could say. Pesos of dollars. Okay. Dollars of pesos, pesos of dollars. Okay. So far, we're off to a good start. But now we want to make it so this selected. We don't want it to print it. We actually want it to do a job. So let's see. Let's make a string variable called text. 
text equals so we want whatever like the user enters into the box to be stored in a variable we could say what do you name our our text we could say text field dot get text so whatever the Whatever the user inputs into here is going to be a number, right? We need that number, and we actually need to do something with it. So we could store it inside of text. But the thing is, we want to do, like, math with it, but we really can't do that unless we put that inside of, like, a, like a double. We could say double x equals double dot. Oh. Parse double, and then we'll pass in our text variable, and that makes it a double. Okay, so now we actually have like, we have a number we can actually do something with. Oh, semicolon. Let's get rid of these print statements. If that's the case, we're going to be doing dollars to pesos. So we could say x equals x. And let me pull up like a, like a Chrome tab. And so $1 is approximately this amount of pesos. So we could just have x times this number right here. Okay, so now we have that, but we want to actually like print it out, and we want to. So the way we could do that, we can get our label called new label. This one right here, we could say label a new label dot set text, but it only accepts a string, and our, our x valuable right now is currently a double. So we could say we just have to make it a string. We could say string s equals double dot to string and then we'll pass it x now we could um, put in our s variable there and it'll whenever like um let's see say we enter 12 and we do dollars to pay so they'll print it but we get this humongous number so what we could do is we could use the index of method so we could say int result equals s dot index of and then we'll pass in our a dot. So this will find one like the, um, give me an example. This will find when this like little period is and we want to print only um, two numbers after it. So the, first we actually find out where it's at and then we could do string output. This is how we're going to format it. We're going to use the substring method. Equals s dot substring. And this goes to the string, it starts at, we can tell it to start at zero and end at result plus three. That should go to the period and then go three spots over, which would be the sec which would be the um, second two numbers after the decimal. And now we can print the output. So we're, this label, we're, we're setting its text, because remember we, we had it in our constructor, but we never did nothing with it. So now we're setting its text equal to the output. So if we run it, we say we enter two thirty-three dollars of pesos, and it will be formatted. Uh, we can say output plus just pesos, something like that, something simple. So we do thirty-two, six hundred eight six twenty-eight uh, eighty-two pesos. So let's actually check our work. Okay, um, dollar to peso. So I like this website right here. I think we had. It was yeah. Let's see. How much is thirty-two pesos? You know, we had we had six hundred twenty-eight. Thirty-two. Six hundred twenty-nine. We've pretty much rounded up just a tad. No, that's fine. And then one USD is this. Oh, I think the price went up, so it fluctuates. So let's actually check our work go back to Chrome yeah 628 that's actually spot on almost we're off by a penny so we could change that later we could round up or round down so that's what we do if it's if this select uh, pesos of dollars we can literally just copy all this code into here so I think it's this big number over here I have it on my second monitor okay so now if we run that it will say 12 and then we'll convert that to dollars so I typed in, yeah, so 12 pesos should be 61 cents if I did that right. Yeah, perfect. 
and now that we have this we can just keep adding like elf is statements and let's add some more like currencies we could say selected let's add a let's let's go back to our array and let's do dollars to what's a popular currency dollars to yen And then we'll do dollars to what's called euros. Okay. For now we're just adding things to it and to make it fun. So if select equals dollars again, we can literally just copy all of this code and to just like find out how much. Um, can't see because my microphone's in the way. So you could say. We just have much to say a dollar to a yen in to a yell to a yen is okay so one dollar equals well yen is a really weak currency should be this number right here so let's say 12 we'll convert that to yen oh it's still it's still saying pesos because we never changed it so let's do see if my output's correct We'll do 12, and then that should be 1,637 yen. So if we open this program right here, 637 yen, okay. So we can do another elf is, else if statement. Else if. This will be the last currency. Where's my little, there it is. If it equals dollars to euros, if that's the case, then we can just copy all this again. Okay, and then, um, so one dollar equals this number of yen, or this number of euros, and it's output plus euros. So let's do 12 and convert that to euros, which would be 11 euros, see if that's right. Yeah, 1138. Yep. Yeah, we're pretty much done with the program. I just want to make it look nicer. Let's go back to our design. Kind of want to center it as much as I can. Let's do one. How much is one dollar to peso? 1965 pesos. Five. One. Wait. One peso to dollars. A nickel. One dollar to yen is. 1346 yen, I don't know how much I can give me. In dollar to euros, 94 euros. Let's make it smaller so we can kind of center it. Not too small though, just in case we have a big output. Okay. 12. It's a lot of pesos. 12 pesos of dollars. 61 cents. That's a lot of yen. And then the euros. Just a simple little program just to convert. This actually gets familiar with the GUI. And if you watch this and you enjoy it all, just leave a like and subscribe. I think I, I think I want to try something different than just the Zyboglabs.